Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker. Play the Opinion Potomac Watch podcast. From the Opinion pages of The Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. The other immediate legislative item on the House's docket will be aid to Israel and Ukraine, including the request recently from President Biden for that. And Kate, at least on Ukraine, Mike Johnson has been a no vote and a skeptic, as I understand, for more than a year now. Here's a quote that circulated. This is what he said in May 2022, after voting against a 40 billion aid package, quote, we should not be sending another 40 billion abroad. When our own border is in chaos, American mothers are struggling to find baby formula, gas prices are at record highs, and American families are struggling to make ends meet without sufficient oversight over where the money will go, unquote. And and two points that I would make about that, Kate. One is that this is not someone who voted for those earlier aid packages and is now frustrated at the lack of rhetorical explanation from President Biden, the lack of explanation of where this conflict is is going in the United States' interest. This is somebody who was voting against this back in May of 2022. And the second is it's hard to even count the number of canards in that statement from him. I mean, I understand people have domestic priorities, but what does struggling to find baby formula have to do with American foreign policy? To my eye, that's just an excuse. Yeah, Kyle. I mean, one thing, though, now it's easy to say some of that stuff and to vote how you want. But when you're leading the conference, I think the things you have to think about change. And one thing, he has to keep the conference together. And there is pretty deep support for funding Ukraine in the conference, even though there is also a growing skepticism. Now, I'd say a couple things on that point. In addition to things that have changed in his own world, in Johnson's own world, well, the things have changed in the world as well with the October 7th attack on Israel. And I think the strategic connection between Israel and Ukraine is quite clear. And the consolidating axis of evil, for lack of a better term, is becoming more obvious. I mean, our news site is carrying a story this afternoon about how some of the terrorists who attacked Israel trained in Iran ahead of the attacks. We also know that Iran has been working with Russia uh, in Syria to kick out U.S. forces, that Russia has been furnishing training jets, perhaps for the Iranian military. Um, This is a really deepening coordination against the United States across the world. So I think there has to be some recognition of that reality in Congress. And I think the politics may are changing from what we've seen before. Now, also, I would add, this is an opportunity for Republicans, the supplemental budget request is an opportunity for Republicans to get in some of their own priorities. For instance, the border also has a natural connection to some of these other topics and securing the homeland and making sure suspicious individuals are coming over a border that isn't sufficiently enforced. So this is a chance for the GOP to get some of their border priorities. It also, there's pretty broad agreement in the Republican conference that China is the biggest threat to America's prosperity. And so this is an opportunity to take a hard look at some things that some of the Republicans have wanted to do, like sending more weapon stocks to Taiwan on improving the U.S. military's um, munition stocks, for instance. So I am still hopeful here, uh, even with some of the question marks that we have that Johnson's left about what a package like this, how that would fare in his house. I think there are reasons to think that the politics are changing to really support real bipartisan action in the House uh, to get some of these problems addressed. Kim, we give you the last word, but another piece of the speakership job is what often goes unnoticed. Kevin McCarthy was a very good fundraiser. He was welcome in a lot of these swing districts. He encouraged Republican candidates to run for office, good candidates to run for office, which is very important for a party that is trying to get and then maintain a House majority. And I think Mike Johnson is is relatively untested on in those terms. He's not a major fundraiser. I saw one report that at the moment he is an office that consists of about a dozen people. And so that will be a test for him as well. And it is notable that there's news outlets already that are saying Republicans have nominated a hard right speaker and centered around him. 
And it is not hard to imagine the way that some of the things in Mike Johnson's background could be used against some of these swing district candidates in 2024. And just to pick one, he was a guy who was advancing litigation to to try to stop the steal in 2020, to block the uh, electors potentially for President Biden from being counted. And there was a news conference this morning when a reporter brought that up, asked him about that. And the Republicans surrounding Mike Johnson basically hooted the question down. And I understand that that is not a question that is of interest to many Republican voters. But in these swing districts, I think that could make a difference. And it looks like a mistake to me. I don't know why he wouldn't address that and and give his view of what happened in 2020 and whether he stands behind President Trump's efforts. Yeah, I guess what I would say, and is probably what also (laughs) motivated him to not answer that is just, I mean, look, for most of these press outlets, anyone uh, to the right of Nancy Pelosi is someone they're going to characterize as hard right. And I think that that is a sentiment that's widely understood and therefore somewhat dismissed by some in the Republican conference, just because it wouldn't really matter if you'd have elected someone from the middle of the conference or someone more from the right of the conference. They're still going to get tarred by Joe Biden and Democrats as some ultra mega Republican. And Mike Johnson is going to have to address the 2020 election at some point going forward. But probably that was just an attempt not to give in to reporters who were immediately trying to play gotcha with the fact that he was elected speaker and put him in a bind. I mean, you're right. There are a lot of things that Mike Johnson is going to have to think about and think about really quickly. One of them, as you note, is fundraising. He has never been a big fundraiser. He's only got about a million dollars on hand in his own reelection account and a, a very tiny amount in his leadership pack. Kevin McCarthy was known for making enormous contributions to the Congressional Leadership Fund, which is a super PAC that helps out the GO leadership in uh, these GOP leadership in some of these races. Um, so he's going to have to figure out how he does that. Or he's also just going to have to figure out a kind of new system whereby he essentially tries to draft, as it were, some of those big headline fundraisers like McCarthy and others to go out uh, with him or go on his behalf and continue to really raise the money. He certainly has a lot of other stuff to focus on the moment. He did note in that governing document, he sort of circulated around that his big ambition for the end of next year was to increase the congressional majority. So he's certainly sending the message to the rest of the members that he's got that on his mind and that he understands understands that that is something else he's got to do. Yeah, he's got to certainly get a bigger staff around him. That shouldn't be difficult given that, you know, once you're speaker, a lot of people would love to come work for you. So he'll get there. That'll be fine. But I think the biggest thing for me is it's one thing to be buddies with everyone and that to round back to the beginning of our conversation. This is a guy who really is liked. He doesn't really have any uh, political enemies. Most people view him as a very kind and decent person, which is why he has that reputation. Does that kindness and decency allow him to corral people into a, a position? We are still looking at a Republican majority with only a four seat majority where any handful of people can cause a problem if they want and they become very good at doing it. I think those are his immediate concerns is is getting Republicans not just on the same page for his speakership, but on the same page for their strategy for dealing with the rest of the legislative agenda. Thank you, Kim and Kate. Thank you all for listening. You can email us at pwpodcast at wsj.com. If you like the show, please hit that subscribe button, and we'll be back tomorrow with another edition of Potomac Watch.